Welcome back to another episode of Good Times Ahead. I'm Nick Eustace, and this is my boy Tanner Thompson. Today we have with us Dan. P- oh fuck! <laughs> I'm trying to get Pet Kosick. Pet Kosick, the owner of the strongest gym in Toronto, the legendary t- Torque Barbell. He also holds the 198-pound all-time Canadian record uh, for a deadlift with 688 pounds, which is fucked. Uh, <laughs> a national junior bench record and a bunch of teenage records. Yeah. So pretty impressive resume there. Uh, me and Nikki went to your gym the first year or two that it opened up. Mm-hmm. So we kind of like we're looking at you like, wow, oh, this guy's huge. Like we really want to be like you kind of. Yeah. So it was cool to like see how you kind of started the whole journey and how we kind of followed you on Instagram <laughs> through the years, even though kind of like lost t- lost touch a little bit. Um, so yeah, I was going to kind of figure out your story and take us back to the beginning if you want. For sure. Um, so just in case the other guys are hearing this, I don't hold that record anymore. It's uh, the deadlift record, I believe, is now 740 something. Holy shit! Uh, I do plan on trying to take it back. Uh, yeah. Just I got to take some time. I've had some injuries. I'll get into them later. But um, yeah, so I've been. Uh, competing in powerlifting since I was like probably 15, 16 years old. Um, from there, I played a lot of sports growing up, like hockey, football, and everything. Mm-hmm. I was a pretty good hockey player, not great. I was a better football player, <laughs> and then I was a better powerlifter. So I just kind of gave up on the sports around like 18 and just kept powerlifting. Um, did my first national competition at 19, and I won that. Uh, sorry, my first powerlifting competition when I was 16. I think mm-hmm. I got third place, uh, competed at 165 pounds, and I believe I squatted 375. I think I benched low 200s, and I deadlifted 418 in my first competition, yeah, uh, 16. Just me and my dad went down. Um, and then, yeah, from there, just kept competing and got strong and then you know the school thing didn't really work out for me I I was never a great student so 19 years old I started working and I'm 32 now and well you guys were at the gym this morning you've seen it grow from uh we opened torque when I say we I had a partner originally for a year and a half and then I bought him out um but uh him and I opened torque 2013 So we're in our 10th year now, and uh, we just renewed for another 10. So that's kind of the overview of it. Um, We can dive in a little deeper for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, You started off working on your basement, right? Yeah. So uh, again, like 15. So I broke my back when I was 13. Holy shit. Playing hockey. Um, I got when they still had touch icing. Yeah. Like maybe seven, eight feet from the boards. I got tripped, and I went, and I hit my lower back. And I remember being on the ice because my legs like were like I had pins and needles all down my So I sort Mm -hmm. of freaking out um and then from there i started doing physio and rehab at sick kids my parents i was young enough i was 13 where it wasn't like immediate surgery it was like we can try this and see if it works Mm -hmm. and that's where i got uh, taught deadlifts like strengthening my hamstrings my lower back uh i remember going on to that physio uh the physio room there at sick kids and you walk past the burns unit and it's like i'm scarred for life from that because yeah. i could picture their faces as i'm walking past to go do my physio so i did that for three times a week uh two to three times a week for like probably nine to ten months okay. and that's where i learned like essentially weightlifting and um that's and then, where you got hooked yeah exactly yeah. and then uh My parents were awesome. They set me up a gym in the basement. So me and my dad on Craigslist, you guys remember Craigslist? Oh, yeah. yeah. I went and bought a bench press, and we still have it at Torque today. Uh, My original bench press that I had when I was 15, it's like I can't get rid of it. I remember seeing videos of, like, you at 16. Like, you posted on your Instagram. You had videos of you in your, like, basement gym. Yeah. Starting off lifting. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. From your basement, what was the next thing after that? What was the next step? From the basement, um... I was 19, so again, competing and all that. And then when I was 19, um, again, the school thing didn't work out. Started working as a personal trainer. I got certified, and I was coaching high school football and helping just with the team and stuff and Mm -hmm. whatever, trying to stay busy because I wasn't in school or anything. Um, And I had a couple guys I was training at a smaller gym uh, down the street from kind of where Torque is now, like more into Mississauga. And I'm driving back through the industrial area where Torque is. And I'd driven that 
probably a hundred times mm -hmm. and I see the sign go up and it said Interfit and I'm like, okay, that looks like a gym. So I turned around, I went back and that's when I met Mike, who was my original partner when yeah. I opened Torque. Um, so I went and uh, talked to him and he had just opened like maybe three months before like a CrossFit style gym. No equipment really, just rings, boxes, dumbbells, kettlebells. And uh, I told him like, I got all this equipment in my basement. I'm training these guys at this other gym. This is closer to my house. Can we work something out so I can start bringing my guys here? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I wrote it out like legit on like a, a contract kind of thing and just said what I was bringing, what the rate was. So he was gonna charge me 700 bucks a month to be able to use the space as much as I want. I had a key, so I brought all my equipment in. And then it just grew from how, there. How old were you at the time? 19. Holy shit. How yeah. many clients did you have at that time? Uh, maybe four guys. Cool. Uh, all ECI football all guys? All ECI guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, uh, William Brosek. I don't know if you yeah, guys remember him. I, I think Joe, Joe Brosek. I know his yeah, brother. Yeah, so I think he was one of the first guys uh, that I trained. And then another girl that I knew and whatever. And then, yeah, so start, I guess word got out and i started mm -hmm. training more of my buddies they knew that i had this space and you know we were doing the thing and and working out and then i'd get somebody's parent and then i'd get another parent and then i'd get their other kid who's training for baseball and mm -hmm. it just naturally grew mm -hmm. and you worked out like along the whole time obviously so when did you know like that this, you want to start your own gym like you wanted to buy them out you wanted to do your own thing so i kind of have this i have like a, I guess i love equipment i love like gym equipment benches mm -hmm. all the different types of stuff and so i'd see something cool pop up and i mm -hmm. go and buy it so i started accumulating all this equipment and we had too much equipment for the the gym that we were in it was like maybe 1500 square feet it was an old automotive garage so i had like dumbbells up to 120s i had multiple benches uh, me and mike did i guess um and then we had two other trainers join us or maybe three other guys join us in this three and a half peer, three and a half year period before Torque opened. What was your your uh, company called or your training called? Because powerful athlete yeah, training. I remember my brother going to it. Yeah, my brother came home one day, and this is right before, probably the summer before Torque. And he was telling me he was like, "Fuck, man! Like I just did this workout at ECI. We had tires. We were pulling stuff, and no one was training like that at that point." Yeah. And so I would bring stuff out to the, the field and I, I had a pickup truck, so I'd load up the tires and all the stuff and, and I'd run boot camps at the field and then mm -hmm. people would see it from the road. And I put my, I had a big banner, you know, the banner that's mm -hmm. hanging in the gym. I had that on the side of my truck so people could see the name and they can go to my website. I had Twitter at the time. And um, so getting back to the, the, like why we opened Torque, between the four or five of us, we probably had like 80 to 120 clients between us. Like we were doing boot camps. Um, I had trained tons of hockey teams and stuff. And it, so we had about 100, uh, 100 people, I'd say. And we started looking for a bigger space. And then right around that time, Premier Fitness closed. All the Premier Fitness is closed. Um, the one right at the end of the street where all the townhouses are, yeah. down the street from Torque Barbell, mm -hmm. uh, there was a Premier there. We were like, okay, we got to look in this area. Yep. We found uh, one of our clients was a real estate agent and she found where Torque is now used to be two units with a wall in the middle. So we yeah. checked it out one size, like we were, we needed more space. Mm -hmm. So we found out if we could knock the wall down, we rented both, took the wall down, combined it into one. And then- Did all yourself, right? Yeah, Did I remember all. seeing the photos. Yeah. You, you and Brett were, or yeah. well, mostly you, but yeah. you guys yeah, were so, doing it. So Brett, uh, he was one of my best buddies growing up. Um, we competed in powerlifting for a long time. Uh, and so he was playing baseball in the States as well in Iowa. So in the summers, he'd come back, he'd help me run the programs and stuff. And then he'd go down to school, play his ball. Um, you know, he was a really great ball player, great athlete, great uh, power lifter. He had a motorcycle accident. Um, I know we talked about that earlier mm -hmm. this morning, but uh, so yeah, so during, so we took possession of the new, the new facility on May 1st and we opened on June 3rd. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the luxury of like being able to shut down one for a while. So Mike Rodrigo, you guys know Rodrigo, who was yeah. one of the trainers that came on at the time. 
and another guy named Josh, they kind of ran all the classes and the boot camps and everything that was going on. Brett helped out a little bit. And then basically me, my dad, when he came, when he was done work, like he were both very uh, handy, handy and mm -hmm. fixed stuff. Um, so I would go straight to the, the new location and do whatever had to be done. Like my cousin, he was looking for some, some work. Um, so for a week I hired him and we put him <laughs> on a, a scissor lift and he painted the whole place. Yeah, cool. And I came back like three, four hours later and he was wearing goggles and it was, it's all white. Right. Yeah. And so when he took the goggles off, he had white everywhere except for his eyes. It was just like, <laughs> it was like reverse raccoon eyes. It was yeah. hilarious. It's awesome. So like things like that. So we did it all ourselves. We knocked the wall down. Um, where did we, you get that work ethic from? Cause not, not a lot of 22 year olds yeah, would be able to do that you know when i was 18 uh, i dropped out of high school uh, in my fifth year i needed like three credits i think to graduate and i was playing football and the team sucked that year i'm like hey screw this i'm done i'm dropping out i was i was working at a fitness equipment store and i was like you know what i'm gonna take over the store one day like <laughs> i'm just gonna keep working here and grind and grind my parents were like you dropped out of school well now you start paying rent mm -hmm. it's like so then i'm paying rent at home mm -hmm. um and I think that's kind of where the work ethic came. I started working at 14 at a skateboard shop. Mm -hmm. um, if I wanted my own money, if I wanted things to spend, my parents said, go and work. And yeah. so I think I, I accredit a lot of that to my parents. Mm -hmm. They ran their own businesses. Um, just, yeah, what I saw growing up. Yep. Yeah. Cool. And well, I, I was thinking about it. Like at the time when I joined Torque, you think like 23 24 you're like oh that like that's old like they haven't yeah. figured out and then you get older and you're like starting your own gym at 23 is fucking impressive yeah 100%. that's a lot especially building it yourself from the ground up essentially mm -hmm. is super impressive yeah when like, did you know you were like strong enough to become be able to compete um i guess after the first time i competed i, I didn't win the first competition i got third yeah mm -hmm. but i just I had been training for a couple of years and strength kind of came natural to, to me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, muscle mass, I think I have to work harder for, but strength, maybe just my bio mechanics or whatever, I'm, I just, I was kind of naturally strong. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, and after that first one, you had, you had, you went to a world, or was it Worlds? No, we, we, we did one together. Oh yeah, I, I did, yeah, a, we did, I one did in a push pull at Waterloo. Yep. Oh, yeah, I remember I, I just finished hockey and like, same thing i joined torque um my brother's like come check out this gym i didn't really know what i was doing you're kind of lost after you lose that sport and I, I joined torque the summer after and i just fell in love with like lifting and working out and lifting heavy essentially yeah and i remember you were like yeah the due date because i was doing like a bench session or something and you're like the due date for the powerlifting meet is tomorrow. Like you got to sign up if you want to do it. I was like, fuck it. Like I have no idea what I'm doing, but yeah. I know you were going, Brett was going, my brother ended up going. Yep. And I, I think went, we had two girls competing yeah, as well. Yeah. And then I went and we went down and I remember showing up, I was wearing Vans for shoes, <laughs> long socks, shorts and a torque powerlifting t-shirt yeah yeah and everyone else is in like a singlet yeah but <laughs> i have a picture from that competition because yeah. then the people after came over uh, a husband and wife and they owned a supplement store and they wanted to sponsor us because we showed up as a team and we kicked um, ass. yeah we basically beat everybody yeah. like that competition i think we all won yeah, yeah i i think like a bunch of us ended up setting like records yeah Brett did uh, for my age group and my weight class i set both the push and the pull record. Yep. And I mean, it was, it was just That's so good much for your fun. first one though. Like, yeah, it was fun, man. It was a blast. You especially had no choice. It. Like you were in there training with us. We yeah. were competing. It's like, are you going to be the only guy not competing? Yeah. Come on. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, you really had no choice. No, yeah. no. Especially like the, the one thirty crews, the Saturdays, like you'd go in and you'd see like Brett and Dan deadlifting like 600 pounds. I can't even get two up like, there back in the day. Yeah. I would bad. fire you up though. Yeah. For yeah. me, a workout was like loading their, like loading the bar <laughs> with the plates and then having to strip them off and put my yeah. like three plates on. But it was definitely intimidating, but it's also like cool. Like you have to be there in order to see it in order to like, once you can just say fuck it and just do it like hop on the bar and just go. I feel like it's just a bit of it. It's a bit easier for you to get, get over that mental, if, that mental hump, right? For sure. The hardest thing to get started in any, like in anything is 
walking through the door yeah yeah and once you're through and and you like nobody's gonna gonna look at you different that you walk in and you can't bench a plate mm -hmm. right they're gonna say damn look at this guy he's he's working at it like, best, yeah yeah because i think the people that are in the gym they realize and they know how hard it is to build strength so they respect anybody that's trying yeah. to do it yeah we had a bunch of friends who like wouldn't, wouldn't go to torque because they were scared yeah to come in and i was yeah. like man why are you why are you scared like we have all walks of life here yeah obviously you have some beasts it's a little yeah it's you intimidating some, i get it it, yep. it is intimidating, intimidating but then you get to know like yourself you get to know brett you get to know like chris back in the day yep everyone was so nice and welcoming and then it it was almost you'd want to go because you i get to see you guys and it was like a, a form of a community a community at that point and we talked about that this morning like coming from team sports mm -hmm. and then you stop playing team sports and now all of a sudden you're joining a gym and there's a powerlifting team you get that camaraderie you get that brotherhood yeah yeah and and that's exactly what you were saying like it, you 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 want to show up and see your boys and you know push the next guy and yeah. and get they pushed push yourself you. yeah, yeah. Sure. it was it was awesome and then just seeing what you've done with torque in general is you've created like a, a family there essentially yeah. like i know each of you have your thanksgivings you have your barbecues yep just throughout the year you put on events and, and it's awesome to see that's what i think separates torque from any gym that i've gone to or any gym that i've seen is yeah and i appreciate that because we we put a lot of effort into making the family mm -hmm. and i think a lot of it stems from you know in the beginning i didn't i have no formal business training mm -hmm. i don't know anything about like formally about finances or accounting or bookkeeping or any of that stuff and so my mom is the one that did all that for the mm -hmm. first yeah. probably seven years. And then over the past three, four years, I've started to take that over so that her and I can get back to like a mother son relationship. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. she was so heavily involved. She came to all the events. She knew everybody. She knew what your personal best was. She knew <laughs> how you competed in your last meet. Yeah. Like she, she really like that, that family aspect of it, I think just kind of came naturally mm -hmm. because, you know, my best friends were all there working out. And then, I also encourage all of our employees too to bring their families in. Bring your your mom and dad. We'll give them a free membership. Um, your siblings, your mm -hmm. boyfriend, your girlfriend. Like when we have staff, like Christmas and stuff. I'm not doing it just for staff. Bring your your significant other mm -hmm. because I want them to know where you work, who you work with. Mm -hmm. So there's none of that like, oh, you're working in a gym with a bunch of guys with their shirts off. Like yeah. I want, or a bunch of girls, you know, in tank tops. Like either way, mm -hmm. I want it to. I want everybody to be comfortable with with mm -hmm. the family part of it, right? Mm -hmm. It's like such a cool perspective on like how to yeah. how to run a place. That's awesome. Yeah, well, um, it was nice just coming in as like a sixteen year old, and you just felt like you were part of something. Yeah. What but, was like the like when you're just starting? out, What was the harsh part business wise for you to like sort of wrap your head around? Like you have to do this now that you're doing your own company. I'm gonna say probably the fact that you always have to be looking for more business mm. um when i was uh just working essentially as a personal trainer i'd get super busy and and i'd be doing nine ten sometimes 11 sessions a day and i wouldn't be putting any money into advertising or or marketing or anything like that i'm not making flyers i'm not putting up uh, road signs or posters and then all of a sudden summer hits and six of your clients leave because they're going to the cottage for the summer. Yeah. Yep. And you're like, okay, now I got to go and find new clients. And so all of a sudden you got to now go for the next couple of weeks without those clients. So that was a big one is that like, you always have to be, even when you're doing really well, you always have to be looking for new business. Yeah. Just you prospecting. Right? Yeah. Never know. You know, people are always going to get hurt. People are always going to move. People are going to lose jobs. People are going to lose interest. Um, it's inevitable that you're going to lose clients and you want to make sure that you give uh, someone told me early on you give everything that you know and you teach that client so that they can be successful when they go to uh, do it on their own mm -hmm. and they're going to speak highly of you and they're going to refer their friend mm -hmm, and yeah. then you do the same thing with the friend and then they're going to refer their brother so it's like that revolving door because you very rarely get people that stay with you for four or five years in a row. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, I, what is the average, like in the NHL, average years, average time in the NHL is two years. What's the average time people spend committing to a gym? Weird question, but. Um, you know, I'd say committing to a gym, 
for us, we have a pretty active membership. Like I think we have 87 to 90, 90% active membership, meaning that these people, like I, I just did our billings and, and did some numbers today. And looking back, like some of our members from 2013, 2014 are still here. So you get yeah. those people. But I think in terms of personal training, people are gonna stick with you for maybe four to eight months, and then they're gonna try it on their own. Yeah. And maybe they're going to do it on their own for four months or five months. And then maybe they come back for two months and buy, you know, another 20 sessions from you and, and give, give them a kickstart. Yeah. Um, but I think the long-term people is very, like for personal training, very far and few. Mm -hmm. But the long-term gym goers without the personal training, that's like a lot, yeah. like again, 80 to 90% for us. Yeah. It's like, I, a, it's like a, sorry. I know uh, we were talking about this earlier. But you were saying your job now that you're established and you've gone through is helping out some of your trainers that have come are coming in. Mm -hmm. What's some of the advice you tell them when they're starting off? Yeah. So I had a conversation just the other day. Well, I do this weekly and, and daily. And the one um, two days or yesterday was basically when you're starting out as a trainer, you need to be using yourself as your advertisement. I think we mm -hmm. spoke about this this morning. Yeah. Like when you're posting on social media, you're posting yourself and what you're doing, your workouts, your squats, your, your bench, your pull-ups, your battle ropes, your box jumps, all that. You're, you're posting it and you're posting why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Eventually you get to a point where you have social proof, where it's like you have this guy who lost 30 pounds and you have that guy who lost 60 pounds or this guy competed at a powerlifting meet and got first place. And then you start to use those as your advertisements to get more people in. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's constantly putting out content and being in front of people because I, I correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm sure somebody would um, say this is the wrong information, but I think it takes like four or five times for somebody to see you before they buy from you. Yeah. Most average. Yeah. You know, you might get that one person that absolutely loves what you have to do and is sold on the first day, mm -hmm. but they got to see you a bunch of times yeah, before yeah. they buy it. And how important would you say social media is now? And I know we were talking about it earlier, like just how much it's changed since you opened up Torque. Huge, yeah. huge. Um, even before it was big, but even more now. Like yeah. Yeah. We, we did a photo shoot uh, two months ago at the gym for all of our staff. Mm -hmm. And basically the goal was to get content for everybody so they can put it on their, their fitness social media um, or their fitness page. And then we link from the Torque website, their trainer profile mm -hmm. to their Instagram page because everybody's gonna look you up. Yeah, yeah. If, if you contact me and you say, I'm looking for a personal trainer, 7 p.m. Uh, three times a week, I'm gonna say, okay, these are your options. You have A, B, and C, and they're gonna look all them up and they're gonna say, you know what, I'm gonna try it with B. So mm -hmm. I think it is really important to have uh, your your presence yep. and being being consistent with it. Yeah. How much of it is looks? Like when someone has options of three people, they can pick the jacked one, most jacked one more often than not. Is that kind of so, like? So yeah, we say <laughs> it's a weird question it's, again. But, no, but no, it's true. That's a great, uh, how you look or what you do is what will get people in the door and how you treat them is how you'll keep them. Yeah. So yeah. you got to be in shape. You got to be lifting big weights or you got to be, you know, treating people through like manual therapies and stuff like that. If that's what you are, like let's say you're a physiotherapist, mm -hmm. you have to be showing what you're doing with people. And how um, it's benefiting them. And how it's benefiting them. You know, for the physiotherapist, you're not going to be taking your shirt off and doing battle ropes <laughs> behind a gym. Uh, but for somebody who's a personal training uh, trainer, targeting maybe fat loss clients, yeah, they're going to want to hire somebody who's in shape and, yeah. and maybe who's done it themselves. So would you help? Would you help them sort of find what they're good at? If they have like really big arms, you should be like, I'm going to. You should push your arms because that's like your best attribute. That's like you, how you'd help them out and sort of take the or pictures that way. Glu glutes. Or glutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, and that's a, so I kind of leave it up to them and what their passion is. Like when I hire a new trainer, um, I say, who's your ideal clientele? Mm -hmm. I'm going to teach them to train everybody, but who's your ideal clientele? And then we're gonna use, like th that might only make up 20%. So we're gonna use, like let's say you're a bodybuilder and you wanna coach other bodybuilders. 
you got to be posting your bodybuilding content, but you also got to be posting some of your other stuff because the other people who are not that 20% are mm-hmm. what's going to carry your, your career yeah. and pay your bills. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, 20% is a lot, right? Mm-hmm. Especially with money, yeah, for sure. Uh, what else we got? Um, Any questions over there? Yeah, man. I, well, we just, I just want to dive in more. Yeah. So, like, I look at, like, a trainer, anyone, like, your brand is your reputation. Yeah. And for you, like, we talked about it on the way over. Like, growing up, we looked up to you guys when we came into the Torque. And, like, just your reputation, we were saying, like, you're a hardworking fucking nose to the ground type of guy like and just seeing today you you showing us your pack like how the fuck have you been able to go through that many injuries <laughs> yeah. and continue to bench press more than 99 percent of the world like and just do you want to list off your injuries because i know you sent me yeah yeah a list of them and so the big injuries uh, i tore my pack three years ago uh, but you know what to answer your question first of all yeah it's i just have something in me where yeah. if i if i don't train hard and i don't reach my potential i don't want to have regret of not achieving personally with my own goals my powerlifting my fitness whatever yeah um and just being like well i tore my pecs so now i can't i can't do it anymore like i haven't competed in five years i've had some things happen over the years but I do plan on competing again. Yeah, so yeah. Um, and that's just in me. Like, I don't know. I just. And do you have that? Does that mindset translate to like business or other aspects of life too? I think so. Yeah. I think um, having the mindset of like, so I, I truly love what I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, previously, I kept my work computer at home or sorry, at work. And then I'd come home and I didn't even have a computer at home. Emily and I, my wife, we didn't even have a computer at home. And now I'm, I'm busy to the point where I bought another computer just so that when we're at home and, and we're, you know, it's after our daughter goes to sleep and we're on the couch hanging out, watching a show, I'm like looking up like clothing suppliers in China or mm-hmm. like I'm looking up where to get gym bags uh, for a cheap cost and then get them printed so then we can Sign. give them as gifts when people sign up for one year. Like... I think that part of it, I just, you I just love it. Off. Yeah, yeah, I, I, and, and that's just me. I don't know. Yeah, but so back to the injuries. Uh, yeah, so the injuries. I tore my pec. I had surgery for that. Um, that was a pretty bad one. You, you spent three days, three nights in the ICU because of that, or no? That was, was when I dropped? dumped uh, yeah. 410 okay. pounds on my chest. So I'm benching, and on the second rep, I didn't realize the bar was bent, and I'm I'm struggling to finish the second rep. And the bar snapped out of my hands. And I'll send you the video. You guys can post it if you want. <laughs> the, yeah, so it snapped out of my hands that way. And it happened so quick that it just, my spotter couldn't grab it. And it's yeah, 410 yeah. pounds. What's he going to do? Yeah. Um, and it came <laughs> right down insane. on my chest. It was right about two inches below my heart. Yeah. And so I, if it would hit my, like, higher up, I probably would have died. Yeah. But it was about two inches below my heart. Um, and just crushed my spleen, my liver, my diaphragm. Like I had pretty bad internal bleeding. Yeah. Uh, so it hits me. And I remember like dumping the bar to the side like that because I knew he wasn't going to pull it off me. Mm-hmm. And then I pushed it off. And then I guess I passed out. And oh. when I went down, I whacked my head in the leg press. And I don't know how long I was out for. When I came to, I was on all fours. Somebody had turned off the music. And there was a photo shoot going on with one of the, like the top photo shoot uh female photo shoot guys his name paul busetta so he's got like six or eight girls in bikinis walking around the gym doing a photo shoot and i'm like Pass. just yeah. got like completely fucked yeah. on the bench and, and then now i'm creating this big scene so i was like i got to get out of here i don't want them to see this whatever like yeah. my ego right <laughs> while so, you're bleeding out <laughs> yeah so i stand up i'm like no no i'm good everyone's like lay down lay down i'm like no i'm fine so I stand up and I walk out the gym. You and I, fucking walked out. Yeah, and I coughed and I just coughed up blood. Uh, and I was like, okay, I got to go to the hospital. Uh, hospital. So they called the ambulance and they kept me uh, for three nights in ICU just to monitor the bleeding. Yeah. Um, thankfully, so basically, if you think about like an orange and you, you squeeze it and it's going to pop on both ends. Mm-hmm. That's what happened with my oh, my organs. So oh, I had what a good metaphor that is. Yeah. So I had I had <laughs> that's like, an image. I had. Like slices on either sides, 
and so I was bleeding from both sides. Uh, um, anyways, so yeah. yeah, that was pretty bad. Um, I couldn't lay on my back for like three months, so the bar went right down and bruised the inside of my spine. Oh, yeah. Fuck. So I couldn't lay on my back. Uh, got back to benching and and uh, about five months later, like after I was able to like, you know, was there, I was still doing cardio and everything. Was there yeah. any like mental block going back? Oh, yeah. yeah, that's I what I couldn't I didn't imagine. touch a bench press for two months. And then one day I went in, I remember it so clearly. And I was like, I'm going to max out today. <laughs> I got to get over this fear. Yeah. And I think I hit three plates and it was oh like, my God. it it's was still pretty impressive. Yeah. And yeah. you tore your bicep too? I tore my bicep last summer, deadlifting 725. Um, wasn't a full tear, so it didn't like roll up my arm, yeah. but instantly I knew something yeah. was wrong and um, went. So I had the surgery for that. They, they did it there and here, and so that's been good. Yeah. Um, the pec, yeah, so I tore the, the muscle or the tendon off the bone, not the muscle oh. from the te- No, no. I tore the muscle from the tendon, not the okay. tendon from the bone. Okay. So they're trying to pull it over and every time they would release it, it would just rip through it's the stitches. Bad. So it took like three hours to repair it. I got like a hundred and something stitches because they went all around the muscle, all around the tendon, <laughs> drilled through the bone. Man. That was like, so that, but I haven't been out of the gym for probably longer than four days. Yeah. Uh, like two days after that, I went in in a sling and I was spotting people on deadlift Saturday. Yeah. Like, it's just literally the definition of built different. Yeah. Like, yeah. Fuck, so you mentioned man. that you wanted to maybe break those records again or go give it a shot or something like that. How would you go about that now that you've been injured a couple times? Was it a different approach? Is it? I think just the deadlift I I would like to take a shot at. Yeah. I don't know if I could. I pulled 655 pretty easily. I haven't really been training too heavy. Um, I'm dieting right now, so strength isn't like at the forefront. But mm-hmm. I think if I take it slow and get myself to like – low sevens yeah and then just do like a short peak like normally in powerlifting we would do like a nine week preparation yeah. rather than doing those nine weeks and having that heavy loads for nine weeks i think i would just shorten it to like mm-hmm. maybe four weeks mm-hmm. are there any guys who could deadlift 800 pounds without being on steroids or anything like that you know it's tough because you look at like the the different federations and there's a federation that is tested mm-hmm. and then the guys leave that federation they go to untested but their numbers aren't spiking huge mm-hmm. so it makes you think is the guys that are being tested are they getting around the drug testing yeah i would say you probably can find that absolute freak who can deadlift 800 or, yeah, or whatever one without one it yeah. but i think there's probably not a most lot. guys would be on performance enhancing drugs yeah just just the industry in general like um we were talking well to do with the injuries um the industry as a whole i know we touched upon this at the gym briefly and if it's something you want to talk about we can talk about it but you were talking about uh, an issue with substance abuse yeah so uh, we talked about that this morning and just kind of said like not many people like to talk about their their yeah issues and stuff and i think you know me having like an addictive personality and being the type of person i am Mm -hmm. um that's probably how my drug issues happened Mm -hmm. uh stemming from injuries yeah yeah well of course you have that many injuries like yeah you know you're you're uh dealing with a lot of pain obviously too when i after i dropped the bar on my chest uh i got sent home with morphine pills and then from there, so that was in 2016 or 2017. Mm-hmm. And then from there, I just struggled for the rest, you know, until uh, in August, I'll be four or five years sober now. Nice. Um, Congrats, so man. it was nice. like, you know, pounding morphine and, and T3s and perks. And then I got addicted to sleeping pills. And then, you know, it just all becomes you know in order to get through a training session like i had to be taking perks just to get through a a training session Mm -hmm. because certain things were so painful Um, but i still was trying to compete at a high level so that's what i had to do to compete at the high level but then you don't realize like how addicted you've gotten and then all of a sudden like i had two bad 
uh, I guess, bouts of it where like three, four months, the first time I lost 38 pounds, the Fuck. second time I lost 42 pounds. Jeez. My stomach was just so wrecked from all the, the painkillers and everything that I was taking um, that I just, I couldn't eat. And yeah. I started losing all this weight. And especially with prescription drugs, people don't smell, they don't smell alcohol in your breath. Yeah. They don't smell weed. They don't smell any of that. So I'm like, oh yeah, I'm dieting, whatever. It's like, meanwhile, I barely slept that night, maybe three, four hours. I woke up, I chugged three Red Bulls to get to the gym and now I'm training my clients. Mm -hmm. And then at, when I got to go train at 1.30 with the 1.30 crew or whatever, yeah. I'm in my office, you know, taking painkillers just to get through like, I, even I, as simple as like taking 12 Advil extra strength in one day. Like that's, yeah. I did that regularly. Like that's yeah. not good. <laughs> you know, it just wrecks your stomach. Yeah, your stomach yeah. lining, right? Yeah, and then it got to a point where um, I went through a, a pretty tough, probably three, four months. Um, Brett, who we mentioned was in a, a motorcycle accident. Yeah. He was the manager of the gym at the time. So I had taken on his, and I don't blame anybody for anything. Yeah. This is all my own issues. Yeah. Um, because I, I didn't have to take drugs or anything yeah. like that. But, um, so took on all of his responsibilities and then a close friend of mine passed away he killed himself um i had a relationship that was ending which was a good thing but you know <laughs> it's a change in your life yeah um, the and then stuff. my dog got sick so it was like four things within like a two three month period and it just sent me down this deep deep rabbit hole yeah um and then basically leading up to like christmas day i remember christmas eve um we all go to church and everything, my family. And I dropped my dog off at home and we're gonna go to midnight mass. I went home, hammered a bunch of pills, smoked a joint, go to church. My family obviously can smell the weed on yeah, me. Yeah, and yeah. so they're like, did you smoke a joint? I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then get home and then I was up till probably three, four in the morning, went to the gym mm -hmm. at three in the morning i don't remember being there i only know i was there because i saw myself on the cameras oh fuck, mm. yeah. so i'm like out of my mind right yeah, yeah um and i'm like stumbling around the gym i did like an hour and a half of cardio i don't even know what i was doing i just yeah. was completely out of my mind so then christmas morning uh basically went cold turkey and my mom helped me get through that you know the withdrawal and everything you know thankfully it was during that time between christmas and new year's so i didn't have a lot going on at the gym. I just stayed home and other people ran the gym. Mm -hmm. um, like our staff, I just said, I'm taking the week off. Yep. And my mom moved in with me and um, basically helped me get through that, throwing up, sweating, yeah. just- Shaking all that. Uh, the shakes, man, it was fucking brutal. Yeah. And then I was good until May. Yeah. And then I went downhill again. And then August 27th, so from May to August 27th, and then I've been sober since August. So I did all of my surgeries with no painkillers. Holy fuck, um, man. And my wife is, she knows, you know, how much I, pain I went through with all that. Yeah. Um, and just helped me through everything. Everything, everything yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, just going through the, the surgeries without painkillers yeah, is... Man. Those are some big Obviously, surgeries. they put you out during surgery. Yeah, but you yeah, wake but up, still, you're like, when you get yeah, once through it. This, the, uh, so they did the, the nerve block in my neck yeah. when I did my pack. And then when I came to, or like maybe, I don't know, I guess the nerve block is probably like 12 hours. So that night, I just remember throbbing, like oh, from drilling fuck, through the bone. Yeah. And it was like, I don't think I slept at all that night. And How would you? Yeah. Jesus. It, it, was, it was really brutal. Yeah. yeah it's something that stands out to me you said when you couldn't sleep you went to the gym at yeah. 3 a.m and like that's something i can relate to we had yeah. a 24-hour gy gym in the bottom of our uh condo building at school and i remember like nights where i was like fucked up or like couldn't sleep or i remember coming home one night like drunk as fuck like but something had happened and i just went straight to the gym yeah i don't know what the fuck i did yeah. probably did nothing yeah, yeah. maybe threw up in the there, gym yeah. but that's something that's always been like a staple for me is like during tough times is i would go there and that's something that was huge for me during those tough times was torque too but just the gym as a whole like mm -hmm. how would you say for you like that helps you 
your mental health or just helps you stay fucking i yeah. say, say for me it helps me stay sane yeah absolutely like, um and i think a lot of us who who love going to the gym and and have that mindset not everybody has that and that's fine mm-hmm. you know the gym is not for everybody and no. but for the those of us who it is it becomes a place like it's our enjoyment it's like mm-hmm. not like oh i gotta go to the gym tonight it's like oh i can't wait to go to the gym tonight and so i think like it's it's kind of you know a place that we can go and it, whether you look at it like you know i go in and if i'm new a deadlift i'm intense and i got my headphones on mm-hmm. and it's like i'm not talking to anybody i might see you but i don't actually see you yeah, yeah. Uh, but at the same time i'm just focused on what i have to do in that moment so in a sense it's almost like meditation yeah mm-hmm. it's like a weird form of meditation you're not sitting on the floor in your own thoughts you're doing something but you're still so in the moment that it kind of is like helps with your mental and i know there's so many people that like every year so in september uh that's when my friend passed away Mm -hmm. so we do all of our day passes we donate them entirely to mental health Mm -hmm. um and during that month people always come up to me and tell me stories about you know the consistency of the gym and like especially with covid and the lockdowns that was really tough and i felt really terrible that we had to close and we just I think like the gym and going into that and I actually was just talking to a client this morning after I trained with you guys um, and we were saying like it's a place where you can go and get out of your house and see your friends and and you know be part of the community and do something when you finish your workout you've accomplished something that day if you don't accomplish anything else at least you got a workout and you accomplished that yeah for me, it's like a, a escape from reality. Everyone has their own like positive outlet. Yeah, and that's something we talked about. Like, I know mine was like partying. Like, uh, I don't know if you remember, but I torque like those years. I partied my fucking ass off, and it was like yeah. to a point where it was like super unhealthy. Yeah, yeah. We we're probably hungover in there pretty much every time. No, we but not even that. It was just that was my other outlet. It was like getting fucked up off drugs and alcohol. Yeah and like with the gym it was just a a positive way to actually deal with shit for sure and i think you know we got to go through struggles whether it's like mental health struggles or addiction or substance abuse whatever Mm -hmm. because then when you get clear-headed you appreciate it so much more like to be honest i have no interest in smoking a joint anymore or you know um even like drinking like i barely drink any like I, we'll have wine and stuff but like i'm not i don't really care to be fucked up anymore <laughs> i've been fucked up and Enough. like really fucked up yeah. for a long time and it's just i don't care to feel like that anymore you yeah. know so i feel like i kind of had to go through those issues that i went through to get to like the mindset i have now but also like it allows you to relate to other people who are yeah. you know in life we all struggle with the gym's yeah. now right so everyone has like their own problems and they come to the gym with those problems and they talk well, about with people with different be, problems yeah being the leader out. of torque or like yeah. the, the head of torque i feel like people can just you lead by example they may not know that story but now you just like seeing it like, yeah you can go in and be like hey dan like I'm dealing with this or For I'm sure. doing that. And I always have an open door policy. Everybody yeah. knows that. Yeah. And it's like, you know, they, they uh, I might not always know what to say, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, even just sometimes having, get like people being able to get stuff off their chest or, yeah. or um, you know, their thoughts just being put out there in the world helps them figure things out on their own, yeah. whether you say anything or not, mm-hmm. you know. The fact that they were even in there made them, feel like like they just came to the gym like they like they got the outlet they got somebody to talk yep. to they found a way to get it out somehow even though like they couldn't do it at home or whatever for the friends whatever reason they have the gym to always go to just in case for sure it's fucking yeah. awesome yeah uh, i wanted to get into so you're talking about you're starting one week out and just your your brand and yep. your app and yeah. um what direction you want to move torque and uh just what's what's coming up for torque as a whole i think uh you know we we got a pretty well oiled machine now at the gym. We got a great staff. We have 15 staff members, uh, maybe 16 now. Um, we're doing about 550 training sessions a month. We're doing tons of boot camps and classes, and uh, I think we have 580 members at the moment. Like things are are 
going pretty good like mm-hmm. covid was really tough and and the lockdowns and everything but we made it through that and uh so it's doing what we're doing and doing it better mm-hmm. but then obviously we talked about it with people now moving to like online training and that um we do offer online training not in a big capacity so trying to expand that more yeah. and we are building an app so basically right now you go on our website you see our what online training is and what you get for it you pay through the website you get an e- a program emailed to you then you go on whatsapp and you go so we're trying to just align everything all in one yeah. so that you just download the app you select your trainer their program they send you their you, they send you your nutrition program yeah it's all aligned so getting more online building a a a platform for the gym online so that we can expand our reach um one week out is kind of a passion project being an athlete competitive yeah. and i said it this morning like when you're prepping for a competition it's so i said earlier it was nine weeks it's really eight weeks of training and then that final week is just resting yeah. recovering and rep- preparing mm-hmm. so when you're at one week out you're kind of like okay thank god like i finished <laughs> it and now i'm ready so it's like at one week out you're ready for your competition mm-hmm. And that's essentially what the brand is being built off of. Um, and I think it's trying to f- uh, go towards powerlifting, bodybuilding, figure competitors, um, strongman athletes, anything where you're, where you're training for a specific event. Yeah. Um, you're going to do merch too, obviously. Eh? Get some merch going too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll be doing, like, again, just starting out with basic shirts and yeah. stuff. And, um, I've done up some designs. I do all of our graphics and, and that. And, Photoshop um, guy? I mess <laughs> around with it and <laughs> see what looks good and ask Emily. And she says, no, that's stupid. And, um, yeah. You know, do it like this. Use this colorway and that. So trying to do that, that's more, like I said, a passion project. Yeah. Um, yeah. How, how have you seen yourself, like, progress with social media over the years? Because I know, like, just even with us doing yeah. this, like, I didn't fucking use social media at all well, in like, a way you, you of know, like... You know, Bradley Martin, stuff like that. You know, like yeah, how yeah. you were talking about earlier, how like they, people come to the gym, they take pictures, they do all this whole area of the gym where they have a picture section and stuff like that. You said you might have missed out on an opportunity like that. You going to go on about that? Yeah, I think what I was saying before was like, I wasn't really big on social media. I would go on and post my lifting and, yeah. and, and that so I would get more clients. But my goal was to get more clients at Torque. It wasn't really to expand my reach online. I didn't yeah. really care about having a big following. And now you realize that, you know, it, to grow online and, and you got to you got to grow your following and you got to be giving, um, you, making content and, and teaching people and giving knowledge. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a big one is trying to use the social media more to start sharing, you know, knowledge of whether it's powerlifting or uh, what I've experienced as a gym owner or yeah. being a personal trainer, starting with zero clients. Um, and I've started, so when I drop my daughter at daycare, when I drive home, I got like a half hour drive. So I got a recorder and I'm like sitting <laughs> in the truck, like as I'm driving and I'm just trying to record things that are coming to my mind yeah. and trying to sort of create a library of like my thoughts yeah. more or less. Yeah. That's cool. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I go to re- listen to it and I'm like, yeah, I hear cars honking in the back. And <laughs> like, You're trying to drive. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. fucking awesome. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Um, just being a gym, gym owner, you said that, like, you probably have some crazy stories, right? Like, what are some of the craziest stuff you've seen just in the, the fitness or powerlifting industry or just owning a gym? Um, some of the stuff that's happened in the gym, thankfully, the biggest injuries have happened to me. We had one guy <laughs> tear his Achilles that was pretty oh, no. nasty. I saw it go up his leg. Oh, he was doing fuck. box jumps. Um you know like i back in the early days we had a guy that gave us a piece of equipment and he wanted to use the gym as his photo shoot and mm-hmm. use it for his marketing and everything so he gave us this piece of equipment for free and it was bolted to the floor on the turf and whatever you probably remember that picnic table looking thing yeah 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 um and one day i get a call from brett and he's like hey this guy's at the gym unbolting that equipment from the floor <laughs> and i'm like oh hell no so i drive in <laughs> and uh i'm like what are you doing he's like oh this is mine and whatever i never gave it to you and all this stuff and like he 
he clearly gave it to us it's as a gift to use. Floor. Yeah, so yeah. I'm like, buddy, get out of here. Like, and he's, he starts getting all like worked up, and then all the boys come up and they're like, "Is there a problem here?" And all of a sudden, <laughs> I turn around. There's like six guys behind me holding like, you know, a, a metal handle yeah. for like a tricep push down. <laughs> and I'm just like, boys, relax. Like, you know. So, anyways, the guy left. Yeah. He's like, "This is not the last of me. You'll see me come back." And it, he never came yeah. back. I would, ne- I would never ever yeah. in my life if I was him. I remember being in high school and like like playing out scenarios where it was like some guy wanted to fight me and i was like okay you want to fight like meet me here and it was gonna be behind torque and i was gonna be like yeah come here show up here and we'll yeah. go at it everyone's like they see you all back oh what's nick doing who's this guy yeah, it's like yeah. you got everybody there i got all the boys there yeah. like, how about like on the cameras like you were like just watching the cameras and you see somebody like fall over like I uh, remember you posted shit. one. You did you do one? Yeah. There was a good one that I posted of, there was a, a cheerleader. I, I don't know if she was with the ti- Tiger Cats or something. Yeah. And she was, there was only two people in the gym, her and then Big Dave Amro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, so he's on the dumbbell side and he's benching like hundreds or something. I don't know. She's on the turf and she's practicing her dance routine. And she's got her music on the, the thing. And I'm in my <laughs> office and... I'm just, I look up at the cameras and I see her doing her thing, whatever. And I look at the other camera and Dave is over on the other side doing his yeah. thing. And he's going like this. <laughs> and it, it's like, it was so yeah. funny. Like yeah. things that. like that. Or people like somebody leaves the treadmill on and a guy doesn't realize and walks oh, up and steps wow. on it and oh, face yeah. plants and it shoots him out the back. <laughs> um, That's so you funny. know, people doing box jumps or people benching with no clips and then all of a sudden all the plates slide off one yeah, side and then yeah. it like flips the bar and yeah um the classics or the the big one was the guy deadlifting i don't know if you guys it went viral because the tag was canadian man dies in the gym oh because the guy was deadlifting we never posted it he posted it mm-hmm. and it went on like one of those daily mail or, or whatever yeah. blogs and he's deadlifting and he, he's struggling to hit it and he drops the weight from the top and i guess he had a big Plot surge out. of blood pressure or something oh, he and he starts passing out and he goes to reach on and there's nothing there and then so he passes <laughs> out and he drills his head on the power rack and he's on the ground and he's shaking oh no and it's God. like it looks pretty bad and thankfully there's a nurse and she's on the step mill right watching him do this so she yeah. hops off and runs over and yeah. so like things like that like <sighs> i just you know there's there's been a lot of things over the yeah. years for sure you've got the opportunity to meet some pretty cool Yep. Famous workout people. Yeah, yeah. we've had uh, when Jim Shark came in, Chris Bumstead, yeah. uh, Steve Cook. Oh, who the, else? We those had? are two huge names. Yeah, yeah, two big names in the fitness industry. And then like we have our pro wall, and I think yeah. you took a picture of it today. Yeah. Or if not, I'll send you another one. But there's probably up to 20 names on there of some of the top IFBB pros. In order to sign the wall, you got to be an IFBB pro. Mm-hmm, so cool. like. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Fuad. Fuad, Uzama. Antoine, Uzama. Frank McGrath. You remember him from Animal Pack? Oh, I um, remember when oh yeah. you guys did the, the tour. Yep, they came yep. in and filmed. And it's cool because we've had a lot of cool things like that where I've got to meet. Like I used to have pictures of Frank McGrath in my parents' basement, you know, the Animal Pack posters. And then I'm in there and I'm benching with him. Yeah. You know, that's been the cool part about owning it is like, I don't meet him at an expo or anything like that. I'm actually meeting him at your gym. in the gym and I'm training with him. And it's like, you know, it's the real deal. It's not, you know, putting on a face for, for a, a trade show. Mm-hmm. Um, or like one guy, I, I, he was an IFBB pro. They came in with the animal guys and he was competing at the national competition that me and Brett were competing mm-hmm. at on the East Coast uh, a couple of months later. So it's like, then when we saw him at the competition, he knew us because he was at Torque. Yeah. And it was like, hey, Mike, what's up? And it was like, <laughs> that part of it's been really cool is the, mm. some of my best friends, I met my wife at the gym. Yeah. Like she was coming in for our 6 a.m. women's only boot camps. And, uh, and that's how we met. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Cool, man. Yeah. So, um, so one more question though. Yeah. How does it work? Like, so no one, like none of the, no of the IP, IP pros are from Toronto, so they would have to come into the city like for, a, for a whatever, for a, meeting or whatever so they just text you and say hey man like i'm in town like can i come into your gym or like how do they word of mouth is that mostly what it is yeah i think um we're 15 minutes from the airport yeah. and well, so the mm-hmm. toronto pro show was last november yeah um and a guy that i follow joel thomas um i really like his physique he's big he's strong he was a power lifter he benched like 600 when he was Holy younger shit. Um, <laughs> so like you know i i kind of 
been following him, saw he was competing at the Toronto Pro, sent him a message, hey, if you're looking for a gym to train at for your last few workouts, come on down to Torque, we're 15 minutes from the airport. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, two days later, so that was like two months before, two days, bef- uh, two days before the competition or whatever, he messaged me on Instagram, hey, um, so what do I do when I get there? I'm like, I'll meet you there. Yeah. And then him and you know a couple other guys come in and that's kind of how it happens. And it's just word of mouth. And then yeah. another question, kind of weird one again. Like before <laughs> someone goes on, sh- on stage, yeah. like for like whatever event, how like how swole are they? Is it just them out of, like off the street, or are they like working out pretty hard before they go on stage? Right before on stage. Yeah. To be honest, it's I'm not a bodybuilder. I've never been on stage, mm-hmm. uh, but it's a quick pump up. Yeah. There's a fine line of being. You mean like pumping up before, yeah, yeah, yeah. like backstage? Yeah. You don't want to be too pumped up because no? then you lose your lines. It's like uh, this fine line of like. Okay being in shape enough where you don't have to really get too pumped to yeah. show your physique yeah makes sense um yeah. so we have we have to finish up here now yeah. but yeah. uh i have two questions for you yeah if you could tell your 23 year old self starting off at torque uh, any piece of advice what would you tell him i'd say just say yes to everything every opportunity every client that comes in um and just put your head down work and just keep trying Mm -hmm. like we tried to do our high performance program over the winter it didn't take off there was like maybe one or two people that wanted to do it Mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean i'm going to not try for the summer so you probably just saw we posted it a couple days ago we're going to try it again for the summer like that used to be a big thing for us and maybe Maybe there's other facilities that are doing that sports better, but we're gonna keep trying. And I think that's a big thing is like over 10 years or even 13 years, I've tried so many different things and some of them do really well and bring in a big financial return or have a great community event or whatever. And some of them totally flop. Mm -hmm. And it's like now I'm at the point where I can look back over the years and see what we've done and pick the things that were really good and try to recreate them. Mm But you have to try everything. You, you can't like, you know, do a powerlifting competition, do a bodybuilding competition, run a 10K, do a Tough Mudder, um, talk to your old high school and see if you can go and teach the weightlifting class. Yeah. Like that's what we do at ECI. Like, mm-hmm. Just put yourself out there for sure and, and keep trying. Yeah. yeah, and then my last one is, what's something you're looking forward to or what's a good time ahead for you? Honestly, I feel like I'm a very optimistic person and I just wake up every morning, more or less, like pretty pumped to do what I have to do. Like, I don't think there's like a specific thing that I'm excited about. Like, you know, we haven't gone away uh, in a couple of years, like to somewhere warm. So that would be like, yeah, we want to go on a trip. But like Mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. No, like I think just generally the growth of the gym and seeing where it's going to be in like, another 10 years we just renewed our lease for another 10 years and i dumped a bunch of money into the gym to up uh in upkeep things and new flooring or new heating new lighting new turf coming in Mm -hmm. um so just generally like seeing it grow because like when i started the gym at 23 i heard this today uh it was ignorance and hard work (laughs) <laughs> it's like ignorant to the fact of what was going to be the next 10 years yeah and like having that hard work of like just putting your head down and showing up every day painting the walls sweeping the floor and you know now it's like same sort of thing like we're trying to do these other businesses and it's like i'm sure it's really hard to make a successful clothing brand but i'm a bit ignorant to it <laughs> i just know hard work yeah you know what i mean yeah, so yeah. I, I like guess that, that would be it yeah i like that i like that yeah well, well thanks yeah. A- Thanks a lot for coming on. Yeah, man. thank you guys. Really you guys need a workout? Head on down to Torque. Come on Marvel. down to Torque. Yeah, Norseman, Norseman want, Street in Tobacco. You want to give your, your the socials for Torque? Yeah, Instagram. Well, uh, Instagram for Torque is just Torque Barbell, Facebook Torque Barbell, anything Google Torque Barbell. And then me personally, Dan Pekosik. Uh, Dan Pekosik PL is Instagram. Okay. Uh, PL is for powerlifting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, hit me up, send me a message. Um, I'm, I'm an open book. Awesome. And if you're in the West End, there Check out Torque. Best gym ever. Best go. gym yeah, ever. Thank you, guys.